Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today. We are at the Tokyo City Flea Market, which is actually at the Oi Racetrack, a horse racing track in its car park. And usually they have this flea market on the weekends, almost every weekend, unless the races are on. This market is split into two sections, the uncovered side and a covered side. So we're on the uncovered side at the moment. And sometimes you have regular vendors, but you also have a whole lot of people who are just there to participate in the flea. So you never know what you're going to get. There's always lots of kokeshi though. This is one place to come for kokeshi. And isn't that quite grand? It's like a replica of a, a samurai outfit. So you can just see that truck there on the right. That is where, behind that is where the kimonos are here, where it says 300 yen on the ground, but it's just too difficult to video whilst I'm rummaging. So I'll show you what I bought a bit later. Let's check out these boxes of kokeshi. I really love these daruma ones, you know, with um, the daruma babies in their mouth. It's so cute, but he's got a huge crack on his head, so I'm going to leave him. There's a lot in here. I actually own one of these ones as well. Um, I think they usually come on a stand though. But now this, you recognize a tiny little Yawata horse. And this is a beautiful kokeshi, but look at the neck. That's not a bobblehead one, so it shouldn't be sticking out like that. So I'm going to leave her. But this one here is a really popular one. You might have seen her quite a bit, actually. She's not in the best of shape. And this one, it's kind of weird because it's half like bleached already, like the bottom half, but the top half, its face is really good. And this one is too modern for me. It's not my type of thing. Her face is kind of burnt brown. Um, I don't mind if the whole thing is burnt, that dark color, like this one. I love this one. This one I am getting because of the beautiful, beautiful flower. And this one too, even if it's a little bit damaged, I love the flower there too. So I'm going to buy those too. Very nice, signed as well. I love all the lines on this one. You know and over here i found a little one with dragonflies i didn't buy him because his neck was a little bit off as well but he's so cute i wish i had bought him now actually and this type you see quite a lot of i like her very much but she has a huge huge sore there <laughs> it looks like a wound there and this see when it's completely gone dark from the sun i don't mind it then i feel like it has a story to tell i like the aging on it this is an interesting owl maybe i should have picked that one up because everything in these boxes were 200 yen so that's about one dollar 35 cents So under here, I have found some flower frogs, really old ones. How cool are they? And look, there's some double ones down there as well. I see the round ones quite often, but not these type. And oh, this, this candlestick, I wasn't so sure of where it was from. Um, maybe I should have gotten it. I couldn't tell what the creature was. Was it a sheep? Not sure. So yeah, there was a double one. But I ended up buying two of the single ones with the chrysanthemums on them. And they were 300 yen each. But she gave me a discount. She gave me two kokeshi and two of the flower frogs for 900 yen total, which is about $6. As 
you can see, the market is actually huge. There's about 350 stalls as advertised, um, but it takes quite a while to go through if it's your first time there. It's from 9 a.m., but some stalls I think are open a bit earlier and it closes at two, but a lot of people start packing up about one o'clock. So either I go very early and then stay till one and sometimes I get some bargains at one o'clock. I've had some really good deals at the end of play as well. So it's worth sticking around. We're now gonna go in the covered section um, it's not like fully covered, but see what I mean? Um, it's more covered than the other side, so it's good for the summer because it can be baking hot. But we're not going to do much shopping here because it's already starting to pack up quite a bit. Um, but they have everything from cosmetics, of course, more Japanese ornaments as well. Usually they're more expensive in this side. It really depends though, but if it's a vendor that's there every week, they have a certain price. I quite like that lamp i think it might be a balinese one more kokeshi i find kokeshi are also less expensive outside i mean they're all still pretty cheap though a lovely dragon there again for the year of the dragon this year 2024 and i think this is a chinese um vendor so they're here regularly um, and yep, yeah, more kokeshi. If you like kokeshi, honestly, this is the place to go for sure. And some cool brushes, old brushes there for calligraphy. And here are some old antique combs as well. Very cool. Loads of clothes. I haven't shown any of the clothes, but there's clothes, there's jewelry. There's literally something for everyone here, I think. You know, here's some European style crockery as well. And, you know, some of it's really organized. And then you get to some areas where it's completely hectic, like this one. This area, like, it's, you just go in there and rummage. And then you just ask the man there how much things are. But it's, it's a bit bonkers. I haven't actually challenged myself with this particular booth. I mean, look at it. It's just, whoa. But you never know what you'll find there. I have now changed location. I am at the Omori branch of Book Off Super Bazaar. This one is a little bit more expensive than the usual Super Bazaar that I go to. Most of my thrifting is done at Book Off Super Bazaar um, in the Kawasaki area. So I will be putting uh, videos up of that too. This is pretty, but everything feels a little bit pricey for me here. This is what we call a futamono, which means a lidded object. So we would use it to put food in that. And this is Arita wear. Look how thin it is. It has a sticker, so no mark on the back. Taking a little overview of the whole section. There's only this one row in this book off Super Bazaar. It's a smaller one. Um, so most book off chains are only selling things like books and comics and anime things, which is pretty um, good if that's the thing you're into. Now I have no idea about this dragon, but it's really heavy. It's not cast iron. It's definitely wrought iron. It's been hammered into place. It's beautiful. I am taking this for myself. I hope I can find out something about it, but I love it. Now this may seem like a harsh title, but look, it's 220 yen. This book by Adrian Tomine is about 30 something dollars, about over 4,000 yen in Japan. So it's a good score. And this is actually a series by a company called Nuno Nuno. So I'm already collecting these. So this was a good find as well. So let's have a look at the thrift haul from the last two shopping trips. This is the golden ox that I purchased in my previous thrift video. It's called Kin no Begoko and from Iwate Prefecture in the north part. 
And this area was famous for producing gold back in the day. So they used to be made of gold dust, these cows, right? But now they are made of wood and they carry treasure chests on either side. So they're auspicious for good luck and in prosperity and business. And this thing only cost me 300 yen, so that was great. Another item from Iwate Prefecture, this type of iron is called Nambu Teki. It's a mini version of their kettle and used as a paperweight, or I like to use them as a little vase like this. These are all from my previous video, by the way, and this is a piece from Kanonji Temple, and it's a commemorative piece. It says on the back it's from the year Showa 50, which makes it 1975, so it's almost 50 years old. And I'm going to use it either as a trinket dish or I am going to put a flower arrangement in it with one of these flower frogs. I bought these also from the same shop. This smaller one was only 20 yen, um, which is about 13 or 14 cents in the US money, so pretty good. These little bobble heads, I absolutely love them. Their heads are in shapes of calligraphy brushes, and we have three characters here. We have the one with the white beard is a daruma. Yeah, Dharma, Dharma. And the one in the middle is a lady, Otafuku. And then here with the long nose, it's the mythical creature, Tengu. And down here on the right, you can see the onsen, hot spring mark. And then the kanji is a little bit faded. I'm thinking it's going to be Arima because Arima is famous for um, calligraphy brushes and it's an onsen region. Um, and Kokeshi usually you pick up um, often in onsen regions as souvenirs. They're so cute and I'm going to keep these. This is the last little guy before we move on to the Oi racetrack purchases. But he is Hote. Hote is one of the seven lucky gods. He's known as the laughing Buddha. He's a happy guy. He is missing his toes there on one foot. Um, but I have put a whole lot of wood oil on him so he's looking much better than when I purchased him. There should also be a fan in his hand at the top there, but I think he's still beautiful and I'm so glad I got him. He is another keeper for me. So here are the flower frogs that I picked up from the racetrack flea market. I still cannot figure out what period of time they came from. I believe they are possibly Meiji or Taisho era, so late 19th century to early 20th, I believe. Lovely chrysanthemums on there. So I'm not going to list them or sell them until I know more. Currently, they're stacked up like this, and I have some brass candle uh, sticks on top of them. Um, but now let's move on to those lovely kokeshi. I'm really glad I picked these two girls up because I love the design on them. The flowers are so pretty. These aren't actually supposed to be a pair, but I think they work well together. And this bigger one, she has irises painted and the stripes haven't faded too badly. They look pretty good. Uh, it's signed by the craftsman Shimazu Seichi and it comes from the Owani area in Aomori Prefecture. So it's a Tsugaru type kokeshi. I love her expression. And this is a smaller one. Um, she's a little bit bleached on one side. Could you see there? She has some damage to her eye too. But I love this camellia on her um, center there. Uh, I think she is actually from Tsuchiyu Onsen area in Fukushima Prefecture. Yes, that's right. On the right, it says Tsuchiyu. But I don't know who the craftsperson is. I managed to get these two kokeshi and the flower frogs for 900 yen total, so about 7 US dollars. Moving on to the obi belts, this stall was doing a 500 yen all you can stuff into a plastic bag deal, so I got a few things. And here you can tell it's uh, thinner here, the width is thinner. This is a Nagoya style belt, Nagoya obi. So let's have a look at the embroidery we have here. I believe it's a crossover of autumn or fall to winter because we have for autumn, we have the maple leaves and chrysanthemums. And then we also have for winter, the plum blossoms and bamboo. 
saying that you can have bamboo designed on your um, kimono and you cut that at different seasons too but it's just because it's grouped together here uh, same here you've got the bamboo again and chrysanthemum so it'll be a fall autumn and uh, winter season some of the embroidery thread is coming apart there but it's still lovely i think it's not going to affect it if you're going to use it as a table runner or i like to have it as a runner on the bottom of my bed you can see that it's not embroidered all the way around, otherwise it would get ruined further as it's been wrapped around your body as a belt. It's all one width because this is a different type of obi, not like the other Nagoya style obi. This is called fukuro obi. And you can also see this hexagonal shape, which is representing a tortoise shell, which we often use in Japanese pattern and design. Now this isn't a usual obi that I would pick up because I find the embroidery so massive. <laughs> These each individual butterflies are huge, but the gold was so pretty on it and I couldn't leave it behind. I mean, pretty much, you know, one item is about 150 yen that I'm paying for. It's absolutely nothing on this day. This is again a fukuro obi. You can see the embroidery doesn't go all the way around. And this would also look nice as a runner on your table or in the end of your bed, or I can chop it and make it into placemats or something on top of a cabinet or something like this. Now, they often smell pretty bad, so it takes quite some time to get the smell out, but you cannot wash them. If you try, mm, the silk might get ruined. Usually if you go to the antiques markets rather than the flea markets, then um, usually they're in a bit better condition, although you pay way more than you do at the flea. So this is one of the howdies that I bought. I love this bright lining inside. There's a little mark at the top, but not too much. I'm going to take the um, string off there because it's actually too small for me that way. I am likely going to be selling a whole bunch of Hauris at one point once I get a new shop running instead of doing eBay. Um, but for the meantime, I might as well wear this one and see how it looks. This is a bit like a shibori zome, like a tie-dye look, but it actually isn't. This is a print, I believe, um, but it's very, very beautiful. I'm loving, loving these colors. This one was kind of unusual looking. It was definitely, for me, I was going to keep this from the first place. It kind of made me think of reflections on water. But I actually tried to hand wash this because it didn't feel like silk and I wasn't so sure. But anyhow, bad thing to do because it, the dye started to come out. Anyway, I rescued it. It's fine. Absolutely fine. But um, yeah, that's why you have to be really careful with these things. And here we have a cotton yukata, which is like our summer kimono, or sometimes you sleep in these. I love the collar there. As I was saying before, bamboo patterns you can use all year round. And this, see the little round circles? That is actually a pattern called kanoko, which is um, like the spots on the back of a bambi on a baby deer. Or a fawn, that's probably the correct word for it. So the sleeves are quite short, can you tell? And that's because it's for a mature woman rather than someone, say, who's 20, 21. Also, kimonos and yukatas for younger people tend to be a lot more colorful. This is quite subdued. So I'd like to pair it with quite a bright colored obi belt, like maybe a dark peach or a red or even yellow it's actually good to clash things for kimonos and yukata so that's what i'm thinking of putting there um this actually i was able to wash no problem and i added starch as well to kind of stiffen the fabric here's everything stacked up that i purchased for 500 yen there are four five six pieces here I could have actually got more as I said probably about three or four more maybe but I really don't need so much stuff yeah sadly I have very very little storage space so I have to be really picky and choosy with what I buy to resell or keep and this dragon was one that I decided to take home to keep and this one has got three toes or three claws, which means it's likely to be Japanese, but it might not be. You never know. It's not 100% a given that three claws means it's Japanese, but it's quite likely. I couldn't find any signature on it, no marks on it. The only marks I see are 
it looks like it's been hammered with a tool rather than being um, cast. I don't think it's a cast iron piece. It's very, very, very skinny. Um, if you look at it from the top angle, which I will show you now, look. <laughs> but I love the big feet. <laughs> so I'm going to keep it until I find out more about it. Definitely keeping it this year for the Chinese Year of the Dragon. I picked up some books, this being one of them. Surprisingly, I quite enjoyed it. I did have a read of the comic first, um, and it's now listed on Mercari Japan for sale. I can make a really good profit on it because I only spent 220 yen. In fact, if you take the cover off, you can actually use it quite nice if you stack them and, you know, you can put a vase or a figurine on top. The color is pretty cool. These ones, there's actually a whole bunch of them, and I'm collecting them. Nuno Nuno Books. Um, I think they're a, maybe a, um, a textiles company, something like this. And so they have this series out. I just have one left to find. And they're pretty cool because in the inside, they have um, literature written in Japanese and in English translation. So they're very artful, beautiful books. I have six out of, I believe, seven books in this series. So I'm on the lookout for it. It's quite hard to find. Um, and then I will list them somewhere for them to be sold as the set. This next book, I don't think I videoed finding. It's the Sotheby's Concise Encyclopedia of Glass. I bought it for myself. It was only 220 yen, so I can always sell it on. It's interesting how the prices differ so much depending on which book off you go to, um, but this one is particularly good for books, so I was happy with this score. Thank you for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the content. I do mainly thrift non-Japanese products for the Japan market. That does much better, but I love Japanese crafts, um, anything folk crafts, so I will continue to make videos that incorporate both. Thank you again and see you very soon. Bye!